electric. Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Time for another portable solar panel video. A3 have been kind enough to send me this 400 watt portable solar panel and I'm extremely pleased to be able to review it because, you know, when I do these sort of review videos, it's really nice when you don't have a high expectation to start with and then it surprises you. So apart from the basics, this is a 400 watt portable solar panel, so it's folded. There are four or five panels, I can't exa exactly remember which. All the cables to connect it are inside the zip bag that's attached to the front, and it stands up on those um, cardboardy stands that are on the bottom of the screen now. I'll show you in a moment how they actually work. But there's not much to say about a solar panel when it uses standard connectors, it connects, it's up to 400 watts of power input. It's good to go. So the things that are interesting about this panel compared to others are, are, the, are the little things, the smaller things. So that's what I'm hoping to tell you about. And I watched a couple of videos about this 400 watt solar panel from Afri, and they seem to be a bit negative about the build quality. So that I want to address and talk about specifically, because I actually think this is really good. The big party piece about this solar panel is it is really really light it's under 10 kilograms it's half the weight of the all powers 400 watt solar panel that i've got so it is extremely good at what it's supposed to be it is portable and it is easy to maneuver around now the material quality I guess if you were going to buy, um, I don't know, a rucksack from a quality outlet, then the material would be one way. And if you bought a more bargain one, the material would have a look and feel of a little less quality. I would say that's what this one is. It, it's it's perfectly good. It seems waterproof. It's nice and smooth. It's easy to clean. But the corners are warping up slightly on the panel. And obviously it's not the solar panel that's doing it. It's the surround and the material. And the material is, I don't know how you'd call it, bubbling slightly. It's not smooth fitting uh, on some of the angles. And uh, I'll show you here. So if you're looking at this, um, the waviness on the material. So this is a brand new panel. I've only used it twice in the garden, but it's not looking sharp and clean and brand new. It's got a worn look to it. So, you know, I might be a little concerned how it might age over time, but I guess the material isn't the issue. It's the stitching, isn't it? So you can have the nicest material that you like, but if the stitching's bad, then a higher quality panel might not be as good as this one. So you're only going to know if this is good quality or not on how it lasts. And that I can't tell. It's just looking not brand new. It's looking a, t a tiny bit scruffy. Um, and that's the only negative I can say. Actually, though, these legs that lift up and the mechanism that it uses, they seem better than some of the other ones. Um, the little bag that carries the cables in, that seems fine as well. And the zip seems of a high quality. The leg is held sturdy onto the casing with a piece of Velcro. And then you've got this retractable strap that slides. And it's a very good mechanism. And the leg itself seems to be of the right sort of size and weight material. So it's easy to use. It does stand stable. I would say better than some of the other panels that I've tested. Some of the theoretically higher um, quality panels. Cables, yep, there's a nice length of cable for attaching to uh, your battery, standard connections, the manual's in there, and it comes with an Anderson cable for connecting as well, which I don't use. The only Anderson connection that I've had is on the All Powers S1500 battery. All the rest use um, MC60 or MC90, I think that's the connection types. So everything's good on that. So next, let's talk about the handle. So it's two canvasy type um, straps that um, roll over with this piece of material that's connected with Velcro. So uh, Susan's here demonstrating how it works, so you can see. So it's it's not the most attractive thing, but it's extremely practical and it works. And if the stitching again is nice and solid, then it, it is going to do the job and it is going to last. So although. I could imagine somebody looking at it for five or 10 minutes might go, oh, it's not very good quality. But actually, the more you spend time with it and the more you hold it, 
it might well outlast some other panels. I would be cautious of saying that it's not very high quality. The thing that I like about it is how easy it is to put up and move around. It is nice and light, and it's extremely easy to understand how to put the thing up. You've got to say, you know when you, um, you used to unfold one of these giant paper maps that we used to use yonks ago, and you'd unfold it and have a look at what's going on on the map, and then you'd never be able to fold it up with the same creases the right way. These portable solar panels are a bit like that. You know, which way does it go, and which way do you fold them? But this solar panel has a nice little extra feature. In between the folds of the solar panels, there are some more Velcro tabs, which I'm trying really hard to film here and show you. Little round circular tabs that are holding these folds together. Now, those are actually useful, one, for holding it together, but also, two, they help you appreciate which way round the solar panel has to fold. So it's very intuitive and very easy to unfold and refold back up again. And to be honest, it's that sort of small feature that is really, really good. So you get another more expensive panel that might cost twice as much, but if it weighs more and it's a little bit awkward and cumbersome to use and work out which way to connect it, this one wins. So although I wasn't expecting a huge amount from this solar panel, I would go and pick this one up and use it over the other ones, over the all powers that I have and the Bluetti. So Afri, this is a great little solar panel. I really like it. And here's a much clearer image of those Velcro tabs that hold everything together. So a nice, simple little feature, but it does actually make it really simple to use. So I've taken the solar panel. Uh, you can see it here sat in front of my garden solar panels. I've actually got six Trina 410 watt solar panels behind it that aren't quite connected yet. So what I'm actually going to do is test this 400 watt solar panel against this Trina fixed 410 watt solar panel to see how comparable 400 watts portable versus 400 watts fixed, see what numbers it actually comes up with. This is the back of the solar panel with all four legs extended, uh, connected to the A3 2400 watt uh, portable storage battery. Um, I've used some extension cables as well, so I haven't actually had to unwind the uh, solar panel connecting cables. But as I said, there is a little there is a little bit. I don't know how much that is, a meter, meter and a half of cable length. So it's not ideal. I think if you've got one of these systems, one of the things that you will need is extension cables for the solar panel because you might want to put the battery somewhere different to where the solar panel is. So the first test was angle the solar panel towards the east, which is where the sun was, to try and get the optimal angle and get as much power as we can. This is nine o'clock in the morning. The sun's low, so we're not going to expect maximum power. And we achieved over 300 watts. Not bad for a first test. Nine o'clock in the morning, low sun, 300 watts from a 400 watt panel. So next, let's leave it an hour, wait for the sun to get a little bit higher and a little bit stronger and see what we get. 343 watts. In fact, it was fluctuating 344, 345, all around the same sort of thing. Obviously, as soon as a little bit of cloud comes over, then it's going to adjust. But not bad again for still not peak time in the day. For those wondering what the conditions were actually like, I turned the camera around at exactly this time and took this shot. So just slightly out of angle of the sun. But as you can see, it's quite a hazy day. There's a fair amount of cloud around. So it was intermittent as being a slightly cloudy, clear sky or clouded completely. So at 345 watts, it was in that clear patch, but still hazy. And the best I saw on this not perfect day was 385 watts. So this was more around midday with the sun at the highest level. And again, angling the panel in the right direction and the right upward degree of angle to try and get the perfect generation. I've got to say, I tried moving the panels around a bit and um, you know, misangling one corner of it here and there or looking at it a bit shallow and a bit steep. And it didn't affect the solar panel generation that much. So you don't have to have it that precise, anywhere roughly in the right direction, and you're going to get decent power from it. One thing that I had to do, though, was keep unplugging this solar panel because while I was waiting for time to pass to get a different reading, the battery was charging too quickly. And what I wanted to do was make sure there was still some headroom in the battery to charge. I didn't want it to be regulated at all and slowing down if the battery was almost full. So I was impressed. 400 watt solar panel and this size battery soon fills up on a decent sunny day. 
So I'm confident the panel will generate 400 watts in perfect condition. So now it's time to put it alongside these fixed rigid panels and see how they compare to other solar panels. So I'm going to compare it to the rigid Trina 410 watt that's behind it. I'm going to compare it to the All Powers 400 watt solar panel and also the Bluetti 350 watt solar panel. It's probably best here to jump straight to the summary conclusion of this, and that's that all the solar panels performed equally in these conditions. The margin of error, because the daylight that was there, there was no sunlight, was fluctuating slightly. So one moment you'd see 40, then you'd see 45, then you might see 50, and we saw um, 66 watts on one solar panel test. But every time I unplugged the panel that I was testing and plugged it back into the Trina fixed solar panel, using that one as the I don't know, the gauge to see whether it's comparable. It performed exactly the same. The only one that performed with any margin of error that wasn't quite as good was the Bluetti because it was 350 watts solar panel, not 400 watts. So it did register slightly lower output by comparison. But I was really pleased. All of the solar panels generated just what you'd expect, exactly the same from them. So this is really interesting that a fixed expensive solar panel that goes on your roof doesn't generate any more wattage, any more power than a portable solar panel. They're all the same. A 400 watt panel is a 400 watt panel. And this one from Afri is a lot lighter than the others. It's even lighter than the Bluetti 350 watt panel. So it's the most practical, it's the easiest to use, it's the easiest to put up and put back away again. So yeah, this is actually now my favorite go-to solar panel and I did not expect that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking at solar panels or just interested in solar panels, I hope there was some useful information in the tests and my review of this Afri 400 watt portable solar panel. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel and I hope you come back again for more videos about electric cars, solar panels, portable batteries, everything about going electric. Bye for now.